Hey guys, Ash here and welcome back to F1 Fanatics. I'm here with our race reaction for the Hungarian Grand Prix that has literally just finished. So this is a immediate reaction as to what I've seen, what my thoughts are regarding it. And I'll be honest, continued with the run of races that we've had. I would say that was a fantastic race. It wasn't the eventful race that we've seen in the last few, especially with Austria and in Germany but there were consistent battles throughout the race and the battle at the front, very good to be seen. I know that we've been wanting to be seeing that sort of battle throughout, but this race was one where it was a driver battle and a strategy battle. It was a two leveled um, race and it meant that we had a variety throughout it and it was a very good race to be watching from a viewer's perspective, especially as an F1 fan, so it was brilliant to see. Well, there's only one place to start, isn't there? And that was the battle at the front between Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton. We've been saying for a while that it would be good to be seeing the battle between the two of them consistently, and today we managed to have it. It was a race-long battle that, yes, kept you gripped and you wanted to be seeing what was going, but it was one of those where you wanted to see which team actually was able to deal with it the best. And because of being in those two separate positions, one within the championship, but also with regards to the race itself, it was quite good to see the different strategies that came into play. So at the start, Max got away well, which was brilliant to see, especially after last weekend where he was slow off of the line, but it did mean that he was able to get a clear run into the first corner and was able to get round without any issues coming from behind, especially as the two Mercedes drivers were battling into that first corner. And it was one of those where the two Mercedes drivers actually continued that battle right round up and started towards turn three, actually, before the move was over. And that did mean that Max was able to open up a gap that, yes, it wasn't as large as some of the gaps we've seen opened up on the first lap by drivers especially Hamilton's had a few races where he's opened up a massive gap at the start but a set gap of about two and a half seconds was definitely a good start for him that's what he wanted and it meant that we were able to have the final battle that we did because of that so brilliant overtake from Lewis on Valtteri Bottas and that was really a pivotal moment because staying behind Bottas was definitely not something that was needed because he did seem to be that little bit slower off the line and didn't really have that grip, locking up twice in the first two corners. As soon as Hamilton was past him, he was straight after Max and it was great to see. Quite early on, it was established that it was gonna be a two horse race between Max and Lewis Hamilton. There wasn't really any challenge coming from behind. And in that first stint, yes, there was that bit of battling between the two of them towards the end of the stint itself, but on the whole, it was more just trading of fastest laps, Hamilton managing the pace of his brakes and also ensuring tyre wear. And it was one of those where strategy started quite early. So the gap between the two drivers had opened up to Carlos Sainz in fifth place. So it meant that they'd be able to come into a nice gap there. But because of how Hungary is as a racetrack, it's not the one that opens itself nicely to having overtakes throughout. So they were wanting to try and open that gap up to Ferrari and that was the key part of that first stint. It was trying to get those overtakes so that you could come out ahead of the two Ferraris. Now, Max was sounding quite nervous at times on the radio to his team, especially because he was complaining that there was a lack of grip from his tyres and that they had seemed to have gone off that little bit earlier than what Hamilton's were doing, but he drove brilliantly. Even without the grip, he was maintaining fast laps. Him and Hamilton, as I said, were trading fast laps between them, although it was Red Bull that blinked first and they came in for their first lap on lap 25. It was a good lap, a pit stop. It wasn't the fastest we've seen, but at 2.6, it was a lap where on the whole, 
got him out nicely. He was ahead of Leclerc, who was in third at the time, so did what he wanted. Hamilton, on the other hand, felt comfortable with his tyres, so was wanting to extend his initial stint as long as he could. Went on for another six laps. The gap didn't open up, and that was the one thing that he was wanting. He wanted that the gap to open up to Verstappen. He needed to have 20 seconds, really. Didn't quite get to it. And when he came in for a pit, his pit stop on lap 31, it was another slow one from Mercedes. There was an issue with his front right, didn't go on as quickly as they would have liked. And he did come out quite a way behind Verstappen. So the gap had opened up. It was roughly six seconds when he came out from the pit stop, but Hamilton used that tyre advantage. So his tyres were fresher. He knew that they would go longer because of that but used the grip straight away. Closed that gap up amazingly to Verstappen, and that was when the battle started. Throughout, defence by Max Verstappen was fantastic. He positioned his car brilliantly, knew where to push the car to limits, knew where not to just take that little bit step back, and Hamilton was throwing everything at him. And when I say everything, coming up the hill towards turn four, when Hamilton ended up actually coming off of the track because of how much he was trying to overtake, just showed that. But the control of both drivers shows the level that they are at. They are the two informed drivers in Formula One at the moment. And the battle between them was fantastic. And to be able to push each other to that limit but know that the respect was there because at no stage did that battle look as if it was going to result in an accident between the two drivers or there was going to be an incident between them. They had that mutual respect, which was fantastic to see. Hamilton did have issues with his brakes, which meant he was having to just come back that little bit. Didn't want to be, didn't want to be in the dirty air behind Verstappen for too long, obviously with overheating of the brakes not really something you're wanting. So he was making sure that he was able to manage those temperatures brilliantly. Now, we did get to a little bit of a lull and the battle itself plateaued. It was almost control, but Verstappen was controlling the gap well. He defended him when he needed to. Hamilton was pushing, but then having to manage his tire temperatures and his brake temperatures as much as possible. So Mercedes, at the time, I'll be honest, I wasn't too sure about it, but it turns out to have been a strategic masterclass. So they pitted Hamilton onto a fresh set of medium tyres on lap 49, so there was still 21 laps of the race to go. They pitted him, he came out with a gap of 20 seconds to Max Verstappen, and through a combination of fantastic laps from Hamilton and his consistency with his times. He dropped into the 118s at one point and was repeatedly cons managing to just lap after lap was making sure that he was on that time limit. And obviously Verstappen having that tyre wear, it did mean that the gap was closed down in 17 laps, which to take 20 seconds out of a driver in, 20, in 17 laps is incredible and Hamilton drove fantastically. Yes, the overtake in the end was inevitable, but it was well worked by Mercedes. Red Bull couldn't answer them because of the way the traffic was within the lap and also the fast lap that Hamilton had as his out lap. If Verstappen was to have pitted, he would have ended up behind Hamilton after that anyway. So it was one where they had to make that decision. For me, I personally think it would have been nicer to have seen Verstappen pit and then had them going at it and battling each other for the final 20 laps. It would have just been nice to have seen that. But by having it the way it was, it kept you on the edge of your seat and you wanted to see the result. At the end of the race, it did mean that obviously Verstappen didn't have any tire wear, tire grip left and he just couldn't battle. So he did end up pit, having another pit stop and ended up just making sure that he did finish the race and then also gave him the opportunity, which he took with both hands, to get fastest lap of the race. So it was great result from both of them there. Fantastic battle throughout the race. Now, what we need to have a look at is Valtteri Bottas because he, if he had been up there, the result could have been completely different. So didn't start at all well, got away okay-ish, 
Hamilton was alongside him quite quickly, and then into that first corner, locked up, which allowed Hamilton around the outside. Did get some good traction off of the line, so kept the battle going, but as soon as he got into turn two, locked up again. And at that moment, Hamilton drove round the outside, brilliant overtaking move, but it was really the last we were really gonna see of Valtteri Bottas in terms of battling at the front. Heading up the hill into turn four, Leclerc had a little bit of a swipe across him. Now for me, first lap of the race, racing incident, but it was an aggressive move by Leclerc and it did mean that there was damage to Valtteri Bottas's front wing. Stayed out for a few laps, just seeing whether it was manageable, but the team decided best thing to do, pit him onto hards, try an audacious one stop going from that early in the race, which was able to be done, it, there's no doubt about that. But once he came out from his pit stop, was there. Times that he was putting in were as fast as Max and Hamilton at the front, which was fantastic. But progression stopped really once he got into the field. The lap times dropped and a lot of the overtakes that he managed were through strategy in the end. And there was quite a bit of it where he gained places as other drivers stopped for um, new tyres, but had a nice little battle with Ricardo in the middle of it. And on the whole, okay race for him, nothing major really. So it wasn't the race he was wanting. And in all honesty, yes, it was unlucky of him to have lost part of his front wing on that first lap. But based on what's been being said from the Mercedes camp, I think that may have been the race that decided that next season he won't have a seat with them. And I think it is now the stage where they will be going for Ocon. So it's something that Mike and I will probably discuss more in detail when we come to our full review. But I think this may have been the one where Mercedes now decide that actually he's not the driver we want going forward. On top of that, when you look at the Ferrari drive today, they checked out quite early. Um, in all honesty, they decided quite quickly that they were just going to go for an early summer break. First lap had the incident between Leclerc and Bottas, and that was about it really. After that, they were in a little race of their own. Um, the gap between Hamilton and Verstappen just kept growing. Never any chance of them getting involved in that battle, and they had their gap to Carlos Sainz, and that was really it. Um, Leclerc drove well, and Verstappen, um, Vettel did as well. Really, he managed to extend his first stint, which was good to see because it did mean he was able to do the alternate strategy in the end. So he did a one stop going from mediums onto the soft tyre, which meant that he was able to close the gap up to Leclerc quite quickly towards the end after his pit stop and was able to get an overtake and secure the third place on the podium. But he did finish on the podium, but it was over a minute behind Hamilton. And that's where I'm coming from when I say they checked out early. It was not a race that they will be happy with. Yes, it was a good set of points for them to get and they got, and getting third and fourth is a good result, but it's not what Ferrari are wanting. So for me, the summer break is gonna be one of those where they're a team that needs it. They're gonna have a look at how the season's been going and have realized it's not what they want. And for them, this race was one where they were out for a Sunday drive more than anything. They had the pace to finish ahead of the McLarens, but there was no real pace from the car itself. And even their advantage that they've had across practice and to some extent in qualifying sector one, that was just gone. There was none of that today. And uh, yeah, checked out early, already on their summer break from lap two onwards really. So that's really the end of Ferrari for the race itself. One team we do have to mention is McLaren. Once again, they had a good team performance. So Lando Norris was doing very well initially, had a slow pit stop, which lost him track position, and he raced well and was able to finish ninth. Not the result he would have wanted. He would have wanted to finish a lot higher, and the car performance was there. 
it was just unfortunate for him that he had his pit stop that wasn't a great one for him. The driver we need to mention the most though is Carlos Sainz. Once again, finishing fifth. He finished above Gasly and Bottas, which yes, Bottas was down to the incident on lap one, but Gasly, that was just out and out pace and driver ability more than anything. And I know that I'm gonna make sure that Mike and I do discuss this in our race review, but I don't think we can keep saying that Carlos Sainz is finishing best of the rest. He is up there now consistently in the Drivers' Championship, he's five points behind Pierre Gasly. And when you think of the incidents that he had with retirements at the start of the season, would definitely be above him had he not had that. So for me, Carlos Sainz is no longer to be considered a best of the rest driver. He is up there on merit and actually deserves to be being considered in that bracket of driver. And the final bit for the race reaction has to just be a little bit about Hamilton and his positioning for this season so far. So as we are at the mid-season break, it's a good time to reflect on that quickly. And after today's race, got his eighth race win of the season, definitely looks to be over the disappointment of his performance last week. He's definitely up there with Max Verstappen as being the informed drivers, within the season at the moment. So if we were to just look at the last four or five races, Hamilton is up there as being one of those informed drivers. Today was his seventh race win at Hungary. That puts him joint with Michael Schumacher in terms of wins at the Hungara ring. And is actually now only 10 race wins away from Schumacher's all time record of 91 race wins. So it's definitely something that he's got in his sight. And driver championship wise, he opened up a bigger gap again, extending it today, and he now has a lead of 62 points. So it is looking quite good for him in terms of his positioning within the, the championship battle. He's definitely got two races at least clear, so he can retire twice in races and still have a lead in the championship. So it's a good position for him he knows that Verstappen is going to be pushing him now and after today's performance and the last few races Verstappen is now the title challenger yes he's a further seven points behind Bottas but in terms of performance Verstappen is the challenger to Lewis Hamilton in terms of this ch driver's championship I don't see it going any other way so that will be the way it's going to be going now and I think we're at the stage where Mercedes is going to start using team orders in Lewis Hamilton's favour, even though it is something they don't like doing. So that's where we're at at the end of this race. That's my reaction for the Hungarian Grand Prix. Great race, fantastic result, enjoyed the battles throughout. Guys, can you make sure that if you like what we're doing, you are pressing that subscribe button, making sure you're getting the notifications as well by clicking on the bell icon, knowing when our videos are coming live, Comment below who you think was your driver of the day and also what you think of the battle so far between Hamilton and Verstappen and how far you think that can go within the championship itself. And guys, I look forward to seeing you later in the week with our Race Reaction podcast. So enjoy the rest of your weekend and I will see you then. Bye.